after losing everything I own to the 2019 bushfires in Australia, I've rebuilt my life and plan on travelling to every continent with my Africa twin. Join me on this adventure as I rise from the ashes of my former life. Welcome back, my name's Simon. If you happen to be new here, this channel is all about motorcycles, adventure, camping and touring. And I've just spent the last few nights uh, chatting with Graham and Katrina, and Graham and Katrina are absolutely top people, firstly. Um, they've travelled lots of countries on a motorbike, not just Australia, in fact, uh, their motorbike's currently overseas. They came back at the start of COVID, and they're just about to fly back out and join up with their bike. And as such, um, it was really good to chat with them, really good to learn a few things about how to do things better when you're off traveling in other countries. And I've learned a lot from them and, uh, and I've got a few things to change in the way I do things and a few things to, uh, to improve so really really good anyway so i really need to catch up with the map and where we're up to on the map but i might do that when we stop for the evening um or maybe tomorrow morning because i completely forgot today but basically at the moment i'm in the bigger valley which is in southern new south wales and i'm currently heading to a place called mckillop's bridge which is the uh, largest single-span wooden bridge in the Southern Hemisphere, I believe. And it actually crosses over the Snowy River. Anyway, I'll see you when we get up there and uh, we'll see what it's all about up there. Unless something happens, uh, you know, or the road is particularly really cool, I'm not gonna record a heck of a lot on the road all the time because essentially, um, you know, one of these bush roads looks just like another one of these bush roads, really. But I'll tell you what, though, riding around through the Bega Valley and coming down through the mountains the other day from uh, up in the ACT was really cool. Like, I managed to um, scrub my tyres right to the edge on some of those corners. That was really, really awesome. Um, and I wasn't going super fast. It was just there were such lovely corners. You could lean right over in them. Anyway guys, I'll catch you a little bit further down the road. Oh, what a pretty little creek. It's quite sad that a lot of these mountain areas have got, you know, like 60 kilometer an hour speed limits, but I guess it's probably for the best because otherwise you get idiots screaming through here at 100 and killing themselves. I've got my phone plugged in charging today because um, it's been really annoying getting to camp basically and having a flat battery on the phone. So I thought I'll just plug it into my um, USB port there and, um, you know, charge it up. Because when you're relying on your phone for almost everything, um, battery tends to go flat fairly quick probably the most annoying thing about it, really. So one of the things that I have noticed today, for instance, because now we're, um, well, we're well into, starting into May now, uh, what are we on the 6th of May? Um, it's actually starting to get quite a bit cooler, even in the daytime, like it's 14 degrees there now. Um, so yeah, there's that. I haven't got any of the liners in my jacket at the moment. I mean, this is still quite pleasant to ride in. Um, so I don't feel the need to go and, you know, layer up yet. But if it gets much colder than that, I probably will. And I'm going up into the mountains, so yeah, anything's possible. I mean, 
just looking at the elevation profile there. So we're currently at about 250, or oh, probably 300, oh, 291 metres, there you go. And we're going to climb up to about 800 to 900 metres. So, yeah, it's, um, it's bound to get cooler. It's funny, it doesn't seem no matter where you go on the Australian continent, there's places that have been touched by fire, but the severity of the fires that we had in 2019, 2020 were absolutely unprecedented. And the amount of fire that we had at one time. I mean, in summer, yes, we're a country that gets bushfire, but yeah, we had areas, you know, an area of fire burning at the same time that's bigger than a lot of countries. That's pretty scary. And you may ask, so what's the government doing about this? Nothing. We still don't have dedicated fire tankers. We hire them from Canada and America. We still don't have, um, you know, a, a bushfire plan in place or a natural emergency plan in place. Um, and unfortunately, our federal government is very much a government of climate change deniers. But hey, we've got an election coming up this month, so maybe if we're lucky, it'll change. Far out. He doesn't like to stay over a bit, does he? So I just put the heated grips on because we're now down to 11 degrees. And albeit that the Barkbusters uh, storm handguards tend to take a lot of the wind off my fingers, there's still enough there that I can feel it. Feel every part of that 11 degrees. So I've probably got 15 or 20 minutes till I reach the first town on my st on my trip through. Then I think it's time for lunch. Hopefully they'll have a good hamburger shop there or something like that. That'd be nice. Nice big juicy hamburger. So this road that I'm traveling on, unfortunately it's 60 through all of these sections of it, but this is called the Mount Dara Road. There's D A R R A G H, Mount Dara Road. And it's really quite pretty. I mean, again, you can still see the damage from the bushfires a couple of years ago, but it's super green through here because since the bushfires, we've had a huge amount of rain in Australia. So it's super green through here and looks really lush. But um, what a gorgeous bit of road to travel on. Like it's got beautiful twisties on it, uh, nice ups and down grades, that sort of thing. The occasional switchbacks, not many of them on this one that I've found so far, but um, yeah, really quite, quite a nice road to ride on. I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate that you have to travel so slow on it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't. And occasionally I might slip over the speed limit, but I've got no interest in picking up speeding fines, you know, on my way around the country. <coughs> so I've got to be careful with that. I mean, there are bits of it there where it's 80 kilometers an hour, bits of it where it's 60. Haven't found anything at 100 yet. The, uh, the twat nav down here seems to think this is 100 through here. But you can definitely tell that we're heading up towards the uh, snowy mountains again. It's now down to 10 degrees. 
and dropping. Yeah, crank those heated grips up to a, up to number three, I think. I mean, I could just change to my winter gloves and put the liner in my jacket, but um, yeah, you can tell we're starting to get up higher though. Ice on road, that sort of thing. Um, we're currently at uh, 838 metres and climbing. I mean, so it's not super high, like, I mean, when you talk European mountains or whatever, but, um, yeah, temperature definitely drops when you come up here, though. <laughs> Look at that, that's pretty. The dam there is just like a lake. Then we randomly come to this bit up here, it looks like it's kind of up the top of the mountains, and, um, it's 100 kilometres an hour here, first time. <laughs> and wow, that wind's cold. <laughs> wow. I think I might just have to stop and put the liner in and get my, uh, my warmer gloves on. Kind of chills you to the bone. Lots and lots of sheep up here on these properties up on top of the plateau here. I mean, I suppose being cooler, it's probably better for sheep farming. Yeah. to stop and fix this. There's a little bit of a savage crosswind, which certainly doesn't help make me feel any warmer. The sun's nice, but the crosswind's taking all the heat of that on my black riding gear straight out of it. because they're crap really probably won't show you just how beautiful it is but yeah take my word for it it's beautiful so I'm gonna stop here because that's a gorgeous little bridge and I want to get it with that so I've got to work out what the hell's wrong with that it's funny because that thing was saying that the memory card wasn't fast enough it's a uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro memory card with the fastest speeds. Anyway, then it came up and said there was insufficient memory. Then it came up and said any all sorts of other things. Now, it's just working. Weird. Which means I can get this beautiful bridge with it though. I was just pulled up there though, and a guy pulled up there. He said, oh, it's only bicycles that have to dismount. And he laughed and drove off. It was actually kind of funny. A gorgeous little old bridge though. So I put my uh, waterproof liner inside my jacket, which is good because it stops the wind, and I put my um, winter weight gloves on and I've still got the um, heated grips on, but um, yeah, a lot more comfortable now. Um, 
don't know what the actual temperature is because the bike was sitting there for a while and that was saying 20 degrees but within a few minutes I'm sure it will tell me what the actual temperature is Men's Shed Waterworks and SES HQ. Now for those overseas listeners, uh, watchers, overseas people who are watching this video, the Men's Shed in Australia was set up as a mental health type thing. Um, and the Men's Shed will actually, like basically, guys of any age can turn up there and um, you know talk with men who are there learn things from them they do little workshops where they help you learn how to build things and do diy and i believe all sorts of stuff like that which is actually really kind of cool um i mean i've never been into one because i've never really had the opportunity or need to do so but um, they're in a lot of towns particularly rural towns Oh, look at the, uh, the high peak on that roof there. It must be an old church. Just did a guess. Yeah, good guess. Beautiful. Village Ford. Bombler is another one of these quaint little country towns with lots of interesting things. Snowy Monaro Regional Council. Look at the old building here. That's the Literary Institute. Um, you know, like, I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? So I'm actually going to the, uh, the club that's here on the corner because Graham and Katrina said you should go in there and go to see the toilets. Apparently there's something very interesting in the toilets here. Even looking on Google, there's uh, there's mentions about the toilets. You should see the toilets. Uh, it's really got me quite intrigued now as to just what it is that I should see about the toilets. So after having myself a nice big burger and some chips, I've decided that... Uh, as it's going to get extremely cold tonight, down to zero, I don't really want to travel further, so I'm going to stay in Bombala. So I come down and have a look at this old building here. Looks like an old pub. Gorgeous, eh? The White House. <laughs> So I just met the uh, the lady that runs the place, and um, yeah, it's like thirty dollars or something a night cheaper than than the caravan park. So I've got myself a room here tonight, which is great because it means I can edit video and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I can chill out. Well, not chill out. Warm up, <laughs> warm up, edit video, and. Um, hopefully get myself back on schedule so far as my videos go. So, we'll go have a quick tour of the room, shall we? Let's just cover that up. 
stop moisture getting in. Oh, lovely. It smells fresh too. Yep, nice little bathroom. Queen size bed, TV, microwave. Oh, fridge. What more could you ask for? And heater. Heater is good. Haha. <laughs> nice. Right, let me go and get my stuff sorted out. By the way, hello. <laughs> I'm going to end this video for today. If you got something out of it, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And um, you can come and watch more of this crazy crap where I turn up and try and find some accommodation in a place where it's going to be freezing or below tonight. See you on the next one. Till then, ride safe and get out and live your own adventure. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs>